Hello, my name is Dwayne Kimball, owner and founder of KMD 89 and VA Claims Consulting, Leave No Vet Behind, and also I'm United States Army veteran. Today, I'm bringing you another educational video as it pertains to the VA disability compensation claims process. But before we get into today's video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and always share this video with your fellow veterans. And also, don't forget, you can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So today's video. Today, I'm going to be uh, discussing an email that came out this past Tuesday uh, that the VA sent out for the VA schedule for rating disabilities update as it pertains to sleep apnea, mental health, and tinnitus. I talked about this last night on my live stream, and I've done some additional research thanks to uh, a subscriber that sent me some information. I did a little bit of research, so I want to share it with you so you can see uh, the changes and what that possibly means for you. Now, again, these are proposed changes, okay? And, and also in this email, it, it states um, that, you know, you can leave a comment, okay? So uh, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump right into this information, okay? So I'm going to be sharing uh, some information with you. This is this is the actual email, okay? So um, in the first part, I didn't get to copy the top uh, portion of it, but it states VA schedule schedule for rating disabilities update, sleep apnea, mental health, and tinnitus, okay? First paragraph, dear veteran, the Department of Veterans Affairs is proposing changes to the VA schedule for rating disabilities specifically pertaining to the uh, respiratory, audio, auditory, and mental disorders body system, okay? Um, when I talked about last night, uh, the information I'm going to share with you, I hadn't reviewed it. I talked about it today in a couple of uh, veterans groups that I was in. I've done this some research, and I definitely think you want to go out and do some additional research as well. Also, for the updated changes I'm going to show you, I'm going to list the federal registry that link so you can go and do some additional information. I mean, some additional research because what I'm going to show you is just a small snapshot. It is a lot of information. Okay. So then it goes on to say the proposed updates to the rating schedule for these conditions would enable VA to incorporate modern medical data and terminology to provide veterans with more accurate and consistent decisions. Hmm. Okay, let's just wait and see, okay? But there's some additional information uh, in this email as well. I'll leave it up a couple of seconds uh, so you can you know, maybe pause the video and just watch it, okay? Now, the last paragraph, it states, no change to a veteran's current rating would occur Due to these proposed changes, if the proposed changes are finalized, veterans who currently receive compensation, I'm sorry, yeah, receive compensation for a service-connected um, service connected condition can apply for increased compensation, but no reductions shall be made unless an improvement in the veteran's disability is shown um, shown to have occurred, okay? So with that, what they're saying there is, they're not going to go back and look at everybody's sleep apnea and look at everybody's mental condition and look at everybody's tinnitus, okay? Um, but you can still go in for an increase and you're still going to fall under the same uh, cri current criteria as it pertains to if the, uh, the CMP exam so shows some improvement, okay? So definitely uh, keep that in mind. So the next four slides I'm going to go over talks about I'm going to show you uh, some of the old criteria for the mental condition and then the proposed new criteria. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is the current, well, I'm not, I don't want to say old, but right now this is the current criteria uh, for the general uh, rating criteria. Now you see chronic adjustment up disorder up there. That's just the last diagnosis uh, for all the mental conditions, but this criteria is the same for all mental PTSD, anxiety, uh, general uh, chronic adjustment disorder, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you go to the VA's website, 
you can pull this information off and you can see the criteria for the 0, 10, 30, 50, 70, and 100. So that way, this is the current criteria. So for everybody that's already service connected, let's just say at 100% or 70 or whatever, you're grandfathered in right now, okay? Uh, but you can go out and find this information right now. Now, the next slide. Here in the next slide, this is the new, I'm sorry, yeah, the um, new proposed inf information for the rating schedule. Now, when I was looking through this rating, um, proposed rating schedule on the Federal Register, and again, I, I can't pronounce the individual's name, but thank you for leaving me a comment and bringing it to my attention to the Federal Registry, okay? Uh, because last night, you know, I didn't have this information, so didn't know what these proposed changes are, but here you see it. The link for this and the other slides I'm going to show you for the mental, the uh, respiratory, and the audio, which, which contains those changes, I'm going to leave the link in the description section. It is a lot of information. It's going to take you, it took me about an hour to try and just skim through it. But if I read it word for word, it'd be a couple of hours, okay? But you definitely want to go out and do your additional research, okay? So this is the proposed new rating criteria. The one thing that I did read that they were talking about, the mental disorders and the eating disorders and combining those, and then it mentioned about uh, the veterans, I don't want to say it was the ability to, for income, but it was a special note uh, as it pertains to uh, potential earnings and stuff like that, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to get into too much detail. But when you look at this general formula for mental disorders, it's totally different from the previous slide that I showed you. In that email, they talked about proposing to remove that total and social occupational, uh, total and social occupational impairment for the hundred percent. Okay. And here, um, this is what they did. So I'm just going to read the first paragraph and see what it says. The general rating formula for mental disorders contains five domains related to function, co uh, cognizant, um, interpersonal inter, uh, reactions and relationship task completion and life activities, navigating environment and self-care. The criteria below describes each domain. Now, if you think about it, this is something similar, but not the same as Diagnostic Code 8045, the TBI, when it has the different facets. So when they talk about the domain, so it says, evaluate based on level of impairment in each domain as the number of effective domains as follows. Level four is one or more domains, or level three is two or more domains, and talks about that's the 100% criteria. So if you look at the old criteria, it talked about symptoms, you know, um, and so forth. It also, in this federal registry, it talked about the updates to the DSM-5. Now, important, keep in mind, if this change, look at the DBQs that they just updated last month. This is going to have to reflect, if this change, proposed change takes effect, guess what's about to change also? The DBQ, because this cri proposed this criteria, if it uh, changes or becomes new, then they're going to have to update that DBQ as well, because it's going to have, you know, an old DBQ. It doesn't. Well, in the current DBQ, it doesn't follow uh, the 100 percent, 70, 50, 30, and 10 here. Okay, uh, so you definitely you want to go out and look at the the current mental. Um, diagnostic code criteria for the general uh, rating formula for mental disorders and the DBQ because that DBQ is going to change as well for the mental and the PTSD review as well. All right. But again, I'm going to leave the, uh, I'm going to leave the links to this, uh, the registry so you can see it. Okay. Now let's go to tinnitus. And here in tinnitus, uh, I just pulled out 
three different screenshots, okay? It uh, Trust me, it is a lot of information. And you as a veteran, if you are not service connected for these things, you want to go out and look. Look at this. Also, keep in mind, if you're already service connected, you're grandfathered in at the current uh, evaluation and those percentages. VA is not going to go back and look through every veteran's file that, that's rated at status and see and rate them under this new criteria, okay? Now, um, item number two, it says proposed changes to audiology, okay? I'm not going to read that verbatim, but I'll leave it up, all right? But what it does say, I want to point out, VA also proposes note to a four point, that's 38 CFR 4.85, adding a 10% evaluation for non-compensable hearing loss with tinnitus present, where tinnitus is related to the diagnosis of hearing loss, okay? And then in number five, it says, as previously noted under revisions 38 CFR 4.85, proposes to remove DC, which means diagnostic code, 6260. That is the current diagnostic code for tinnitus. And below that, you see diagnostic code 6100, hearing loss. If hearing loss is evaluated at 0% under table, and these tables are for hearing loss and how they calculate it, okay? And tinnitus is diagnosed as associated with underlying hearing loss, then you get 10%, okay? Whereas before, a veteran could not have any hearing loss, but still have tinnitus. So what this is saying is, you know, if you don't have 0% for hearing loss, what about the tinnitus? Okay. And it says in the note one, the 10% evaluation is only applicable to tinnitus diagnosed as associated with non-compensable service-connected hearing loss. Okay. So look at that and do additional research. Okay. But note number two, tinnitus will only be compensated as part of an underlying service connected condition. So it has to be with something else. It's not, it can't be a standalone claim anymore. Okay. Meaning diagnostic code 6260 is going away. And you got to have hair loss at 0% or something else, underlying condition. If not, you're, gonna, you're not going to get it. You're not going to see it broken down on the code sheet tonight at 6260. They're telling you it's going away. All right? Let's move on to the last and final slide. Okay. So as you can see, sleep apnea, diagnostic code 6847. Not going to go through all these, but this, we're going to look at the 50% because right now, is sleep apnea with CPAP, right? But it says treatment ineffective as determined by a sleep study or unable to use treatment due to uh, comorbid conditions and without in organ damage. Now, I'm not a medical professional, so I'm going to have to brush up on all that terminology in there. But as I'm looking at this, I don't see the CPAP machine anywhere. And 100%. Okay, and if you look at the old criteria, which I didn't combine, the old criteria was like uh, respiratory failure. That was part of the 100%. That has changed. The 50% criteria has changed. Okay, even, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there was daytime hyperinsomnia at 30%. So there's no more 30% in the 6847. So it goes back to what I talked about last night. It either could help you or not help you. Now we know the differences. That 30% for daytime hyperinsomnia is gone. So it's only 0, 10, 50, and 100. Okay? So definitely, again, I'm going to put these uh, in the, uh, uh, the links in the description section. Okay? Now, I know that was a lot to unpack. And we talked uh, yesterday, we talked earlier today, and I actually did another video. And when I saw uh, the update, as it talks about the federal registry, I had to go in, I had to delete that video because this is different information. Now they're telling you what these proposed changes are, okay? Which is a good thing from that standpoint. But if you're not service connected for any of these, that could be a problem like that tinnitus. Man, you know, 
is no longer by itself. It has to be combined with some, like hearing loss. You got to have hearing loss at zero. Like I said before, some veterans could be not, you know, denied service connection for hearing loss, but then still granted 10% for tinnitus. No longer the case. Okay. So I think that's going to be maybe a stretch sometimes for a lot of veterans, but also keep in mind these DBQs are going to change as well. Now, these are just three conditions. They listed a lot of information that's changing in that 30C, 38 CFR for mental, audio, and respiratory. I'm only pointing out these three. The general rating criteria for the mental, the tinnitus, and the sleep apnea. Still go out there and read this information. Read it. Okay. Uh, again, talked about it last night. And thank you to the person that left that comment. I really appreciate it. Like I said, I went through, took about an hour. We talked about it at my veterans round table today. Uh, so I may do uh, another live stream, maybe over the weekend or something, uh, dig a little bit more into it and we'll talk about it. You know, but again, that's why I always challenge veterans, get educated on this because things change. And I would say, if this takes place, this could be a, this is a major change. It's not like some of the other uh, changes where they said, oh yeah, we're going to add a diagnostic code for plantar fasciitis, where it used to be rated under another a diagnostic code, but that diagnostic code didn't say it was just like a bilateral foot condition. It wasn't plantar fasciitis. Now it's a separate diagnostic code. Okay, a new diagnostic code for that. And then like uh, adding three new conditions to the Gulf War presumptive. They've updated the um, Agent Orange presumptives a couple of times over the past 10 years, meaning they've added, they've added conditions to that list, okay? I would say, I wouldn't say those are minor. Compared to this, they are. This is a major change. I'm gonna be spending more time uh, reviewing this uh, evidence. I'm going to do another probably a veteran round table or something, but we're going to have a zoom discussion about it. So I just wanted to do a quick video on it. I went through it. I want to show you some of the proposed changes, but also go back and look at the current rating criteria, especially for the sleep apnea. Okay. The tinnitus is, you know, 62, 60, 10% tinnitus. But there's other things that the were some wordings in uh, the 38, the rating schedule for the audio, mental, um, and uh, the sleep, respiratory has changed. This is just a small snapshot. Okay. So I know we like these videos, but still go out there and do your due diligence and do your own research and read it. I'm going to leave the uh, links in the description section below. So make sure you like, subscribe. Hit that notification button. Don't forget, you can catch me on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If I don't see you in one of my next educational videos, I hope I see you in my next bed and roundtable or my YouTube live stream. Thank you.